I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Many of the incidents in the story you're about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. Nine years, from citizen with nothing to conceal, to spy, conspirator, confidant of rogues and traitors, fugitive and decent man and tormentor of the righteous, then free citizen again. Nine years of fear and desperation, but of service, too, and sometimes inspiration, new beliefs in the human family. I'm glad it all happened. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic, Undercover Man. Here is Dana Andrews as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Forged Faces. I make my hourly check with Communist headquarters from a good soundproof pay station. I get Comrade Revchenko on the phone, his usual abrupt and insulting self. I'm in the middle of a counter-insult, which I've found the best defense against Revchenko's insolence, when he interrupts me to put another comrade on the phone. I wait, preparing a cold and hostile manner. I've got to do that to preserve some self-respect among the comrades. I wonder who this new comrade will be to have inspired tones of respect from Revchenko. I wait, and then... Comrade Svetik? Oh? What do you mean by, oh... A lady, comrade. I suppose I should be flattered that you distinguish me as a lady. Something in the voice. I want you to meet me tonight. Say when, say where. Are you familiar with the suburbs, Ottawa Heights? Some of my best friends are Ottawa. Meet me at the circle. My car will be parked about 100 feet south of the circle traffic light. When? Our appointment is for 10 p.m., so meet me at my car at 9.30. What appointment at 10 p.m.? A suitable one for a lady... And here, gentlemen. Goodbye, Comrade Fedick. And goodbye to you, Comrade Question Mark. Benedetta. Benedetta. Ladylike. Comrade Fedick. Oh. <laughs> Benedetta. Benedetta. A strange, almost affected name, but one that goes with a liquid voice on the telephone. At 9.30, I'm cruising slowly through the better area of our best suburb. I locate the circle in the dark shadow of a single car parked this side of the traffic light. I stop behind the dim car and turn off my lights and get out, walk to the other car. The woman is behind the wheel. Overhanging trees block off the light from the corner... The woman is nearly a form and an outline in the darkness, a veiled face without detail, only an exquisite voice named Benedetta. Get in. That's better. Yes. We'll talk a moment and then keep our appointment. Go ahead. With Dr. Victor Kervian. A professional visit? Yes. At this hour? At this hour. Special appointment. You're the boss. Dr. Perviant's specialty is one that may be very useful to the party one day. Also, access to the case history files of a high-ranking doctor like Perviant's could be invaluable to us. Blackmail, etc. Yes. Do we invite him to join the party? We compel him to join us. Or else what? 
A few years ago, Dr. Perviance operated on a man whose face had been badly injured in an acetylene explosion. A man named Macklin. Then he performed a miracle of surgery to restore humanity to Macklin's shattered face. Oh, plastic surgeon. Dr. Perviance didn't know that Macklin was a dangerous criminal. You and I are now prepared to present proof that he did know it. And that for a large fee, performed the operation for a shotgun wound without informing the police. Blackmail. Etc. In order to use him and to blackmail others through his files... Etc. I present myself as a patient. He will come out to talk to my anxious and attentive husband. Namely, you. And while you detain him, I plant certain incriminating papers in his file. Oh, you're Mrs. Matthew Savetic? Yes, I... I was involved in an accident with... with fire. Were you? Why do you suppose I was chosen for this job? Why do I wear a veil and go out on these nights? I'm sorry. You find it difficult, if not impossible, to discuss it. Even with my physician. He'll understand. I'll have done most of the explaining. Shall we go? I'm ready when you are, wife. The housekeeper admits Benedetta to Dr. Perviance's elegant office while I wait in the reception room. My mind remains obsessed and possessed with an image of Benedetta, tall and graceful and somehow electric in her almost totally black costume. I wait ten minutes, then Dr. Perviance comes out. Straight, gentle, and serious. Mr. Smedic? Oh, yes, Doctor. Mm, please sit down. Thank you. If I may have a word with you before Mrs. Smedic comes out. Please, Doctor. I've already shown your wife this, well, this book with some of the restorations I've succeeded in making. Oh? Uh-huh. I don't make very broad claims, Mr. Smedic. You mean, so far as my wife is concerned? In any case. Oh, I understand completely. No promises, no claims. Only the record of performance. I think the cases represented in this book are a fair example of what you may have some right to expect, if you'd care to glance through it. Oh, yes, I will. Oh. Not very pretty, you see. No. But if one turns the page, you see? Well, that's not the same woman. It is. And thank you. Well... Uh... What's the next step with, with us, Doctor? That's for you and Mrs. Fettig to discuss. Oh, I see. Well, uh, what do I owe you this far? Uh, Mrs. Fettig took care of that, thank you. All ready, Master. We must keep the doctor any later. You've been too good as it is, Doctor. Well, I'm here to be helpful. I know. You'll hear further from us, Doctor. And remember about the photograph if you decide, won't you? Yes, sir. Well, good night, Dr. Pervian. Good night. Come, dear. <laughs> The enchantment of a romantic situation, supported by some of my early reading and the fragrance of dark perfume, is one thing. The witch's broth of blackmail that I've helped start bubbling is another that I have no taste for. Dr. Perviance is a decent and useful and gifted citizen, and the comrades have figured a way to turn his art and his mercy to their corrupt end. And where does it ever stop? Who's safe? Not you, not me, not Tom, not Dick, not Harry, not anyone, great or small. I tell my FBI contact of progress today. You all finished eating that? No appetite after eating my heart out. Mm. It's an unusually interesting case, Matt. Frame up and blackmail? What's so sparkling? Well, it presents an interesting question and maybe some answers. Why is a communist? Why do they fall for it? You take this Benedetta. Because of some mysterious accident, fire, she says. Why not? All right. An outcast from society, she thinks. She turns to communism for self-justification, revenge on society. I don't know. But that fire, or whatever it was, was sure a dirty break for Dr. Victor Perviance. Yeah? That? Benedetta, where have you been? Long time no see. Never mind. Say when, say where, say how. Pick me up in front of my hotel at 10 tonight. The graveyard's just again. What do you know about photography? 
What do you want me to know about it? Can you take pictures at night? Indeed I can. Bring whatever you need. Okay. Important. Understand. Bye. With a fairly decent camera beside me and a gadget bag full of impressive attachments, I pick up Benedetta at the agreed time. Then, with Benedetta navigating, we steer for the suburbs again. This time to a broken, abandoned place overlooking the sea. And he's always there. But I'm wondering now, what's the point? Pervians knows what she looks like now. What's the point? My lady in black tells me to stop the car on a nubby dirt road, and we go up creaking steps into the cavernous house, haunted by us. In here. What about a light? No. Is this your beach house? No. Then I won't ask if it's your furniture, especially since there isn't any. A bookcase against the wall. No books. But no books go perfectly when no light. Don't be a fool. How foolish is it for me to ask if Comrade Revchenko considers this in line of party duty? The ocean is so beautiful. Especially by moonlight. Especially if you have clear title to the house. Gulf of Naples. Terranean Sea. Sapphire by day. Darkest space by night. Magic sea forlorn. If I could only forget all that. About this photography now. You're... Behind the bookcase. I will hold the flashlight for you. I go to the bookcase and grope behind it. I pull out a large, flat portfolio, the kind artists keep their work in. Open it. I open it. There's nothing inside. It's gone. Whatever it was. It was there. I know it was there. I put it there. Well, tell me, what? Benedetta. Benedetta? It's been missing from the museum for days. I took it. You took it? Stole it then, but it was me. And what's me is mine. Isn't that so? Isn't that true? Benedetta, listen to me. Gone. It's no good to me. Gone. It's useless to me. Useless. Useless. Hopeless. I was going to put it back. I just wanted a picture of it. That's all. That's all. You believe me? Yes. There are no photographs of it. A condition. A condition of the gift. You understand? Yes, I do. We'd better get out of this place, Benedetta. It's badly haunted. Back to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sebatic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. Benedetta is coldly poised again when I drop her off at her hotel. I watch her from the car as she ducks her head, tapping the desk clerk. Still trying to hide her veiled face from the elevator man as the elevator doors hide her from sight. Then, I break a strict FBI rule. I call my FBI contact at his hotel, covering up as much as we can with our prearranged double talk, but adding up to a midnight conference in his room. Shouldn't have come here, Matt. You know that. I shouldn't have to shake either, but I have. Anything new on Dr. Pervian? Whatever new torment the comrades have figured out for him is in other tormented hands. 
I'm personally grateful for that. Mm. Now, tell me about the girl now. Well, she dragged me out to a lonely beach house, apparently to photograph a painting of herself that she'd stolen from the local museum. She must have been quite a girl in her pre-veil-wearing days. Phone call. Uh, Shelley 9380, please. Who? Simpson Boyd. Who? Director of the art museum. I want to know if that painting of Benedetta has really been stolen. Or if it exists at all, except in fantasy. We get Timkin Boyd out of bed, and we get an embarrassed admission that establishes one thing at once. Benedetta isn't out of her mind yet. In his study, Boyd tells me about Benedetta. Richard Warner painted it years ago. His incredibly beautiful and fascinating wife, he was. Oh, if Richard Warner had only lived. Why didn't he? He was taking his wife to the desert for her health, and his private plane crashed in Arizona. Richard Warner died in the wreck. What about his wife? Vanished. Thin air. Now, um, I have kept the theft of the painting from the newspapers until Samuel Warner arrived. Richard's surviving brother, the donor of the painting. Is he arriving? He's here. Where? Why? Do you want the painting back or not? Well, certainly I want it back. Invite Warner for dinner tomorrow. No, I, I have not spoken to him in years. Now I'm afraid to. You don't want the painting back, is that it? Yes. Well, invite him for dinner, so he'll be away from home when I want to get in. And let's have his address. <laughs> The deal isn't fair, but the door is unlocked simply because somebody has been there before me with a key. I look all over for any portfolio that might hold a smallish oil painting. Nothing. Seville Warner's personal effects pay off better. In a worn leather document case, I find a note written on blue paper in a woman's graceful but strong hand. My dear Richard, you know by now of the accident and of the tragedy. I am well, but I must never see you again, and this is why. We were not flying here for my help. We were in love. We were running away. And now that he is dead, I cannot return to you. I know how this will shock and hurt you. Forgive me. Then again. Who, who turned off the light? Who is it? Did you find the painter? No. Did you? You were here before, weren't you? No, I didn't find it. Where is it? Now, wait. Listen to me. Where is it? This will be about a private plane that crashed and burned in Arizona years ago. Fire. Fire. Take it easy. You and your husband crashed and burned. Yes, I see it now. Only the papers made a natural mistake. No, there was no mistake. The man with you on that trip wasn't your husband. It's a lie. Uh-huh. The authorities positively identified the body as Richard. But ten days after the wreck, you write a note to your husband who was supposed to have been killed in the wreck. No. Who was really the man in the plane with you? You've no right to insult me, so the authorities... Quiet. I went outside the door. Get into the kitchen and wait, understand? Yes, yes. Well, thank you for the light, Mr. Warner. Who... Who are you? You broke into a beach house last night. Who are you, I say? You stole an oil painting by Richard Warner. Indeed. You followed the woman who had hidden the painting in that beach house. You broke in. You took it. Simple. Why? Simple. It was mine. The painting is at this moment safely back in the museum. If it is, you took it back. Of course. Why? Who's the veiled lady you followed to the beach house? Why can't you let the past lie buried? Well, I can't let it just lie. Sit down. Yes, Benedetta was your wife. Yes. You are not Seville Warner, brother of the man who married and who painted Benedetta, but that man himself. You're Richard, Benedetta's husband. Yes, yes. The man killed in the wreck was your brother. He was my inspiration, Benedetta. She became ill, nothing serious. I was painting in the Tetons. I told Seville to take her to the desert for a few weeks. They crashed. I received that note from Benedetta saying she'd been running away with Seville, pleading for forgiveness. The authorities took the charred body in the wreckage for you. Yes. And you just left it that way. You became your own brother. And something else. 
When I gave up my own identity, I shed a reptile skin. Richard Warner had been a communist, hating communism, praying for escape. When I took the identity of my dead brother, I was free of communism. They would let me alone. What good to communists is a dead comrade? I had lost my beloved wife. And I had also shed the reptile skin. The very cream of the guest, eh? Perhaps. When the painting vanished, I knew she must have taken it. Did you know why? She always loved it so. Is that a good bourgeoisie motive for robbery? I couldn't let the police hunt her down like a beast. I came back to find the painting and return it. Welcome to it, and welcome back, Comrade Warner. No. Welcome. Get out. Get out or I'll kill you. Good night, Comrade. My soul were dead enough to shoot you. Bill! It's hard to take, awful hard, but I take it. Somehow, I've got to keep Warner lost to the party and use it to lose Benedetta to the party as well. But keep myself covered all the time if my plans misfire. I don't want Benedetta reporting me to the control commission. But she's in the kitchen in her husband's apartment. No, no, she isn't. There's a tall, veiled figure at the elevators, and I start running and pulling her away just as she's about to press the button for the down car. Benedetta! Let me alone. Please, please let me alone. Listen. You've got to go back there. How can I? You don't understand. How can I? Wait. Go back. But don't fall for his talk. He'll tell you he loves you. Richard still loves me? But don't listen to it for his forgiveness. Don't listen to him. A traitor and a renegade to the party. What? Go back, yes. But tell him you're in the party now. And summon him to return to the party or face the consequences. He loves me. Forgive me. But a renegade to the party. And there's nothing to forgive. I never betrayed him. That letter was a lie for his sake. He loved my beauty so, and look at it. You wanted to see? See. My burned beauty, the most beautiful Benedetta. The face my husband loved. Look. Her gloved hand ripped away the veil. I stopped breathing. My stomach jumped and lay cold and still. It wasn't a face. It was something dead and ancient, something volcanic. Something that had been white hot and fluid once, and then had cooled into glazed and tortured plains and ridges. Benedetta's face was a horror. But her eyes were beautiful. And they were crying. That's why you lied to your husband. The beauty he loved. Gone. I became this. Shadow. I understand. Go to him. I want you to see how a traitor to the party deserts everything, abandons everything. You are a swan. I will go. I'll go with you. We'll see. Loves you, he says. If I'm wrong about this, I. God help us all. Man's soul is worthless, and his pledges are a mockery, and love is a sneer, and treachery and corruption are in the seats of judgment, if I'm wrong. Benedetta? Benedetta, you've been hurt. <laughs> That's right. Only hurt. You should have told me. Only hurt a little. There are doctors now for this. I know. We'll find one for you. Darling. Richard. I have found one. I'm not wrong. When I leave them, they don't know I've left. They're weeping in each other's arms. In love, never out of love, come fire and party displeasure. And Richard Warner, ex-communist, can tell Dr. Perkins, plastic surgeon, the contours of a new and living portrait of Benedetta, ex-communist. She'll clear Perkins. Me? I can't help it, can I, if the party can't hold its members against bourgeois sentiment and faith and the fireproof qualities of man's soul. 
After all, the party still has me. Oh, yes, indeed. I'm a communist for the FBI. I walk alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. you've just heard is only one of many, just as unusual, all based in fact. Places, people, and other data are changed to protect the innocent. Like other stories in this series, this story was based on incidents in the experience and knowledge of Matt Savetti, who works undercover for the FBI. Be with us next week for another exciting adventure in this amazing series. Thanks. <laughs> 